still no new releases? They all got pushed back? Well, without anything new to talk about, I need an idea for a theory, and you know what that means! The triumphant return of... The Wheel of Gaming! Wheel of Gaming, spin, spin, spin! Give me a game that's a total win! <laughs> very funny, Wheel. Let's try this again. Wheel of Gaming, that wasn't right. Give me a topic that's super tight. Ahem, <clears throat> that's gonna be a yikes from me here, Chief. Let's do it one more time. Wheel of Gaming, what are you smoking? It's time for you to stop your joking. Oh, come on, is this thing broken? Ha <laughs> uh, I see the problem here. Just a slight misalignment issue. Wow, it landed on a Mario Theory. Thanks, Wheel of Gaming. But seriously, if you ever want to come out of the closet again, you will never embarrass me like this. Internet. Welcome to Game Theory, where I'd like to start today's episode off by telling you that there is finally some new theory wear available right now in our merch store and in the merch shelf right below this video. And back by popular demand is, drumroll please, the Game Theory Switch Case, this time in a holographic design. It is colorific. And speaking of holographics, we also have this incredible lightweight zip-up mesh hoodie jacket with holographic Game Theory print on it. It's soft, it's waterproof, it is perfect for going outside this spring or summer. Or, you know, just walking around your really cold house. If you don't like fully zipped up jackets, we also have this lightweight half-zip hoodie sporting the Game Theory green and a little secret inside. It folds up into it. Itself. So you can take some waterproof theorist pride action with you whenever you're on the go. Ooh, it's cold. I need a jacket. Luckily it's in one of these many pockets. I forgot which one. I'm so much warmer. And it's waterproof too. Oh, it's right <laughs> me in the face! Waterproof too. What? What are you aiming at? Oh, God. We've got new hats, we've got a new tie-dye shirt, but the last thing I'll mention is our Game Theory wallet, made with sustainable, animal-friendly pleather. It has embossed patterns, a full metal Game Theory logo on the front, with plenty of slots inside of it for your various cards, and a reminder that everything is all just a theory on the inside. It just makes me really happy. The rainbows, the wallet, the functionality. I just wanted designs that weren't so serious right now. You know, stuff that would make us a little bit happier. And on that note, I wanted to call out here that I'm not gonna do that YouTuber thing where we create false scarcity and fake you out and make you think that things are sold out and you feel really bad when you don't get an item that you were excited for and then, oh, miraculously, we made more. Go figure. Good thing that you waited around. You better get it before it's out. Like, I don't know, it's just mean and it's playing psychological games with you and right now, I don't think anyone needs anything that's gonna make them feel bad, right? So this whole collection is made on pre-order, basically under the idea that if you want it, you're gonna get it. Merch from your favorite creators should make you feel happy. It shouldn't be some sort of contest or competition or something that stresses you out. There's already enough stress out there in the world these days, so if you're excited about it, we're excited to make it for you. Everything you need is below this video. Merch shelf, top line of the description. And as a final note, thank you guys so much for supporting stuff like this. At a time like this when ad revenue is really, really, really low, you guys going out and supporting the merch makes a huge, huge difference to all of us working on this channel, so thank you, stay safe. And with that, it's time to talk about everyone's favorite D tier smash fighter, Yoshi. Perhaps the single most inconsistent character in the Mario canon. I mean, Mario? Always the hero in red. Luigi? Always the scaredy cat in green. Toad? Always obnoxious. But Yoshi? I mean, he is all over the place. Sometimes he has a saddle. Other times that saddle is actually a shell. Sometimes he can talk. Other times he just says his own name like a reject Pokemon. Three fingers, four fingers, wool fingers. It is everywhere. Heck, can we even be sure his name is Yoshi? Because guess what? In 1995, it was translated as Yossi. Yossi! I mean, the games tell us that he's meant to be a dinosaur, but is he even that? So today, I wanted to answer the question, what the heck is a Yoshi exactly? We're looking at their behavior and their biology to determine exactly what they are. Are they dinosaurs? And if so, what sort of dinosaur are they? And along the way, we may just come up with a solution for how he became the long-tongued, egg-pooping green 
green machine of death that we all know and love? Who knows? Well, the answer to that one is is me. I know. And the answer is yeah. We're going to answer those by the end of this episode. So stay tuned. It's it's a good one. For the anti-Nintendo viewers out there, all you guys coming from the FNAF and Minecraft fandoms, Yoshi was introduced in Super Mario World back in 1990 and has been in 101 games since that time, ranging from the NES all the way to the most recent Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games Tokyo 2020, which, come to think of it, is kind of a weird piece of history at this point. The Olympics are pushed back to next year, which means that the only official Olympic Games of 2020 are going to be a competition between two fictional game universes. I wonder if they're going to re-release that for next year. Anyway, according to Nintendo Official Magazine, the inspiration for Yoshi began with a little lizard creature named Tamagon, star of the 1984 game Devil World. You know, that beloved Nintendo franchise where you descend down into H double hockey sticks and use crosses to defeat the devil wearing his red speedo. Yep, that green little dinosaur right there carrying the Bible, that is our earliest version of Yoshi. So from that holy beginning of being humanity's savior, Yoshi kinda downgraded. And in his first official appearance in Super Mario World, he basically functioned as little more than a cute mount for swallowing Goombas and being sacrificed mercilessly into lava pits. But he quickly became a fan favorite, earning spin-off titles and even a starting position in the Smash franchise. He's iconic for inhaling just about anything, and turning them instantly into an egg, including babies. Yep, he can even eat baby Mario. Revenge and babies never tasted so sweet. So what exactly is this baby-eating reptilian? Well, in the original Japanese version of Super Mario World, Yoshi writes us a letter in the message box just outside of his house. He signs it Super Dragon Yoshi, supporting the idea that Yoshi here is a dragon instead of a dinosaur is the fact that there are dragon coins hidden throughout the stages in this game. Coins that, wouldn't you know it, have Yoshi's face on them. That said, those are really the only two major instances of Yoshi being considered a dragon. In pretty much every other media item since since then, he's considered a dinosaur. In Smash Bros. 64, his trophy reads, quote, Yoshi is the friendly dinosaur. In Melee, again, quote, Yoshis are gentle, fleet of foot dinosaurs, end quote. And going back to that original appearance in Super Mario World, both the English and Japanese have the setting of the game as Dinosaur Land, with Yoshi listed as a young dinosaur in the original manuals. It's also worth noting that most, if not all, the enemies in Mario games can be simplified into an animal or plant inspiration. For instance, all the other residents of Dinosaur Land, Resnor, Rex, and Dino Rhino, all of them have clear counterparts in IRL prehistory. Resnor, duh, it's a Triceratops. Though the name of Rex might make you think that this guy is a T-Rex that Miyamoto slapped some wings onto and called it an enemy, the design is actually riffing on the Ceratosaurus. They both have horns on their snouts, walk on two legs, have teeth that hang out of their mouths, and were likely two-toned from their belly to their back. Heck, Rex's height in-game even matches the real-life height of the Ceratosaurus, just slightly over that of a fully grown man. Lastly, the dino rhinos are pretty clearly protoceratops, albeit a little bit larger, with its stocky quadruped body, hornless head, and bird-like little beak. So where does this leave Yoshi then? It doesn't really have any defining traits that clearly harken back to dinosaurs that we know about off the top of our heads, so what is it exactly? Well, let's start by defining Yoshi's characteristics. Yoshi is oh so taller than Mario at 175 centimeters, established in an earlier video, with smooth green skin along his back and a white underbelly. Red spikes along the spine that lead to his shell, which was originally a saddle, so I'm gonna take that one with a grain of salt. Speaking of eggs, Yoshis are born from a hard shell egg, as shown in its hatching animation in Super Mario World for the SNES. Note the egg cracking and it's chipping away. Its head is very large, especially around the nose. He has a thick, stocky tail, and the species can be found in all sorts of climates throughout the Mushroom Kingdom, from scorching deserts to freezing tundra. And last, but certainly not least, we have Yoshi's long prehensile tongue that it uses to snatch up Bowser's underlings. So with that arsenal of information, we can quickly and systematically narrow down what Yoshi is using. Drum roll, please. <laughs> That's two drum rolls in the same episode. Very special. I should probably get to what I'm about to reveal, which I guarantee is going to be underwhelming. Cladistics! The classification of animals and plants according to the characteristics that they have in common. Come on, guys! That is totally worth a drum roll. You remember cladistics from school, right? Domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species, and all that? Well, if you've forgotten it, or you never learned it because no one's learning from any of the online classes that are going on right now, here's the mnemonic device that you won't forget. Drunken kangaroos punch children on family game shows. 
shows. Or you know what, there's always the classic, Dear King Philip came over for great sausage. I think you can replace that with the appropriate word, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Anyway, what all this is gonna do is let us narrow down what Yoshi is so we can put him alongside the appropriate similar creature. Just to cover our bases, I'm gonna start with the highest level of classification. Yoshi is eukaryotic, meaning that its cells have a membrane-bound nucleus, placing it under the domain of eukarya. Its kingdom is animalia, since it's a multicellular animal, and it must be in the phylum chordata because Yoshi has a backbone. Now, those are three super broad classifications, but in those three quick steps, we've already eliminated about 97% of all animals on Earth. That really puts things in perspective, doesn't it? Philosophy aside and phylogeny back on the table, we now get into the segments of classification that are based on physical traits and characteristics. We established before that Yoshi is a dinosaur, so that puts him in the class of Sauropsida, the classification where you find reptiles and birds. From here, things start to get a bit dicey, though. There are two orders that we can put Yoshi into, Sauritskia or Ornitskia, meaning lizard-hipped or bird-hipped respectively, and as you can imagine, this is based off the structure of the animal's pelvis. Really, the difference boils down to the placement of the pubis. The pubis, not... Uh, th this bone right here, the, the pubis bone. But how do we possibly check out Yoshi's pubis placement? Well, when it comes time to look at the skeletons of fictional video game creatures, there's only one place to turn to, Super Smash Brothers 64 and Pikachu's shock ability. Oh no. Oh, that's horrific. Yoshi not only doesn't have a pubis, he literally doesn't have a pelvis. He is completely comprised of ribs, apparently. Just a big old walking rib cage. So, okay, maybe Nintendo hasn't really given us an official, accurate read on the state of Yoshi's skeletal system, so we're gonna need to tackle this problem a different way. The order Ornitskia is comprised of the Ornithopods, Marginocephalia, and Thyreophora. Now, don't worry if those words mean nothing to you. I'm barely holding their pronunciations together myself. I literally just looked up how to pronounce them all just so I didn't butcher them completely. I'm just gonna simplify them for you. Ornithopods are dinosaurs that primarily walked on two legs, ate plants, and have a little beak, like the Iguanodon or the Dryosaurus. Marginocephalia are pretty much the dinosaurs with funny looking skulls, the bony frills on the back of their head like a triceratops, or that little ring that you see on those ramming guys that always appear in the Jurassic Park movies. Those guys, by the way, are called the Pachycephalosaurus, and they always make me think that they have a bald spot on the top of their head, right? Like, whoops, someone forgot to put their toupee on. And lastly, there are the Thyreophrians, which mean shield bearers. These are the guys with body armor, like the Ankylosaurus and the Stegosaurus. And looking across all three of these categories, Yoshi doesn't fit any of them. He doesn't have have a beak or any sort of weird skull extensions outside of that enormous nose of his, and he doesn't have any sort of scaly body armor. So by process of elimination, he's pretty solidly in the Sauriskia order, which itself is broken down into two main suborders. Sauropods, the massive long-necked dinosaurs like the Brontosaurus, definitely not Yoshi, and the Theropods, carnivorous bipedal dinosaurs like the T-Rex and the Allosaurus, known for walking fast on their two legs, eating meat, and using grasping clawed fingers. I don't think I need to really discuss this any further. Yoshi's order is Sauriskia, and his suborder is Theropoda, hands down. What also helps support this idea is that Nintendo's official name for the Yoshi dinosaur, his scientific name, is T. Yoshisaur Munchakupas. What does that T stand for? No one really knows. Nintendo's never come out and said it, but I'm gonna say it right here. I think that the T actually stands for Theropod. Theropoda Yoshisaur Munchakupa. It actually works. It would be his official scientific name. So, let's recap here. Kingdom, Animalia, Phylum, Chordata, Class, Sauropsida, Order, Sauriskia, Suborder, Theropoda. We are almost there. Now all we need is his genus and his species. So, up until now, we've been focused on the little things, right? Yoshi's cells, his hips, his pubis. Now we just need to look at the big picture. Common traits across every Yoshi include that huge honker on his face, the frills down his back that are always red no matter what his skin color, a height roughly the size of an adult man, and boots. So, all we really need to identify Yoshi is to find an IRL dinosaur in the Theropoda suborder with red spines, a big nose, a height around 175 centimeters, and a set of permanent footwear. And after scouring the entire encyclopedia of dinosaurs, I think I have it. Yoshi's closest dinosaur relative is none other than... Can I get a drum roll, please?
Okay, three drum rolls in the same episode? No, I'm just overusing an editing trope for dramatic purposes, and also comedic effect. But seriously, this is getting kind of obnoxious, so let me just say it. It's the Monolophosaurus, a medium-sized bipedal carnivore that lived in western China during the Jurassic period. It's known for the single crest on its skull, giving the front of its face a rounder, more bulbous feel, just like our little Yoshi. It's thought that the crest might have intensified its mighty roar. <laughs> Mighty roar indeed. Height-wise, they're a perfect fit with the Monolophosaurus standing almost exactly at a meter and three quarters in height, which is exactly where Yoshi sits. It was also known to be very communal, hunting in packs, much like we see with the Yoshis living together and building a society together. The area where Monolophosaurus was found also showed signs of ancient water, leading researchers to believe that these dinosaurs lived near the shores of lakes and oceans, which again, look at where Yoshi's house is in Super Mario World, right on the waterline. And the fact that they have a whole island of Yoshis in the next game. Just want to be clear here, I'm not saying Yoshi is a Monolophosaurus, but based off all the evidence as it's been presented, it's extremely likely to be a distant relative of the Monolophosaurus. Which brings me to the biggest problem in all of this, right? What about the multicolored skin, the long tongue, the whole omnivore thing, and the egg laying? Well, I think all of this actually has an explanation under the Monolophosaurus angle. Yoshi's island is surrounded by water, right? So let's assume some Monolophosauruses, Monolophosauri, got stranded on that island. And kind of like Darwin's finches, only the Monolophosauruses that had the right adaptations are actually able to survive on that island. And survival means food. So how are those Monolophosauruses going to find themselves some food? Well, let's look at what's on the menu. As we see in Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island, there aren't a lot of things to eat on that island. The game is mostly filled with Koopa Troopas, the shells of which can't be swallowed, piranha plants, tap taps, and lava blogs, which Yoshi can't eat, and shy guys, which may or may not be native to the island in the first place. In short, the actual edible meat on the island is relatively sparse, meaning that the Monolophosaurus, a carnivorous dinosaur, would have to start broadening out its eating habits to the local fruit, the local fish. But the Monolophosaurus has small arms. It can't be climbing trees to get the fruits that we see growing on them in Yoshi's Island, like mangoes and bananas, so what can it do? Well, it can either develop a long neck, or, better yet, a long tongue that allows it to get both fruit and the fast-flying goonies and gusties of the island. And then what about fish? Well, there's plenty of cheap cheeps in the ocean, but monolophosauruses don't really swim. Well, we better start developing smooth skin, which will serve it better in an environment where it needs to move through the water. Notice that Yoshis aren't particularly good at swimming. They can when they need to, but it's not just their natural thing. That is adaptation at its finest. And finally, what about their coloration? Why do they come in so many different colors, like bright reds and vibrant greens, but also faded blues and browns? Again, it's adaptation. Super Mario World 2 shows us just how colorful Yoshi's Island is, with bright red flowers, big green jungle plants, but also massive systems of gray-blue caves and brown mountains. For Yoshis needing food wherever they can get it on this island, they evolved to feature a huge range of colors in order to survive. Remember, they're communal. They're working together in a lot of cases to pool their food together. And thus, we have how a carnivorous, bipedal, big-nosed Monolophosaurus would, over generations, slowly turn into the neon-colored, omnivorous, long-tongued Yoshisaurus Munchakoopa. Which leads us finally to the biggest question of all, the eggs. How is every Yoshi able to lay eggs? For that, I point you all in the direction of another reptile, the New Mexican Whiptail, a species of lizard that is all-female and still reproduces. That's right, zero males. Suck on that, Bechtel! test. Through a form of asexual reproduction called parthenogenesis, this lizard is able to double the number of chromosomes in their reproductive cells twice before cell division begins, giving their eggs the right number of chromosomes. I mean, they're certainly not doing it at the rate Yoshis are pooping out eggs. I don't know, maybe we chalk that one up to the miracles of nature. So could it be that every Yoshi is just a female descendant of a monolophosaurus? Let's just put it this way. It's all just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching. And remember, the holiday holographic switch case, the holographic jacket, the fold-up jacket, the wallet, the tie-dye hoodies, the hats, all of it are available right now just below this video. Click there to order yours today. No false rush, except for that you need to place an order for us to make it for you in a reasonable amount of time. No mad scramble, just some products made to keep you warm, help you feel cool, and just bring us all a little bit of happiness. I'll see you all next week.